All right, to start off, we're going to launch After Effects and create a new project. Then we're going to create a new composition. I always set mine to 60 FPS. It really depends on broadcast you're doing, uh, but majority of Twitch streams or esports broadcasts will be on 60 FPS. So here I have 60 selected, 1920 times 1080, which is 1080p. You can also go to 4K, 2K, whatever resolution you want. Then for my duration, I set it to 30 seconds. You can make it longer, shorter, up to you. Now you're going to click OK, and here you met with this interface. You will press this button right here, which will basically show you the transparency. If you have this off, it's black. If you have this on, it shows you what is transparent in the image. First, you'll right click the timeline, click New, Solid, and create a new layer. Here you'll click OK and choose your color, and now you have a box. I'll make a secondary one, which is just purely white. Click OK, and click OK again. Now here I have two different boxes. You can press this button to toggle it on and off and see what you have. Now, I'm going to toggle off the white one. We'll come back to that later. First, let's have a look at the blue solid that we added. I'm gonna go ahead and press on this blue rectangle. I'm gonna hold Alt and hold one of the corners to extend it and make it a lot bigger. Then I'm gonna to go to the rotate tool and I'm going to hold Shift while I click rotate. On one of the corners which will give me a perfect degree rotation now I'm going to move it to kind of align the edges with the edges of the screen so as you can see on the screen I'll add a little guide post edit so you can see where you need to line it up so make sure the edges touch now once you have that you can press P which will open up the position timeline here and the keyframes press back on the rectangle hold shift and left click it to move it down. Now, once you have this off screen, make sure there's nothing on the screen, you will click add keyframe here so you can start the stopwatch. Then you go to where you want your transition to end and then you will left click and then hold shift. And then when you move this up, move it to the screen being fully covered. So now if I go to the beginning and press play, it will do this. And then you can change the length by moving the keyframes but obviously this doesn't look too good. So what you'll do is you'll select these and then press F9 and it will create a ease in effect. So it looks in like this. It looks a lot better than the standard one. Now you're gonna select these and then open the value slash graph editor. And here you have something like this. It's a really, really handy tool. So you can click here and then extend this little yellow line to create a kind of different movement graph. So now it looks like this, it kind of is really slow and then it speeds up. Or you can make the transition really fast at the beginning and then slow down. So it really depends what effect you're going for, but I'm normally a fan of going somewhere towards the middle. So I make my graph look something like this. There we go. Okay, so now that we have this blue solid finished, it does this. Kind of goes up quite quickly, a nice little stinger. We want to have this white solid do the exact same thing. So. You need to press S to go to scale. You copy this and you paste it here. So now the scale is the same. You then press R to go to rotation, copy the rotation and paste it here. So now both of these shapes have the same rotation and the same scale. So they're basically the same size. Now you need to copy the position over. So you press P, you copy this and you paste it to this solid. So now both of these do the same exact thing. If I toggle them on and off, you can see they're in the exact same position. So to add a cool effect, I'm going to move the white solid under the blue and I'm going to take the blue solid to start a bit later. So now you have this really cool effect of a double kind of line coming up. You can obviously change this to whatever you prefer, but I always like to have a multi-layered stinger so it's not just one single color. There we go. And now that we have this, you can add a logo in the middle, make it zoom in slash do whatever you want. You can have some sort of text. Um, but in order to animate it out, the way I do it is I copy the white solid, control C and control V. I move it up to the top layer and wherever I want to animate it out. So let's say this is the in animation and now I want it to animate out. So it goes in like that. And here is my stinger so far. So in order to animate it out, 
I will copy the blue solid. I will select everything and then right click, pre-compose, make sure move all attributes is selected. And then you can call this stinger. Click OK. And now it turns it all into one layer. You will then paste on top this blue transition. So here you can see everything is still the same. It's all still transparent. It's just added all into one kind of group layer. You move it up and then the white appears. And then now this layer will be the one that kind of transitions it out and makes everything transparent. So you move this to the position you want. You then click on this layer here, the stinger, and you press Control Shift D, which will split the layer in half. Now you will select something called a track mat. If you don't have this visible, you need to right click on this bar here, go to columns, and it's in the modes section. So right click, column, modes, and then you will see this come up. Now on this layer, you will select in the track mat, inverted alpha mat. So what this does is when there's nothing on the screen, then everything is visible. But the second something comes onto the screen, it goes invisible like here, that you can see. So now if I press play, it looks something like this. Then you find the end where the shape goes out of the screen. You then zoom all the way out and then you make this pretty small like that. And here you have a quick stinger that is made. Now you can add a logo to the middle of this. You can pretty much throw what you want. Um, you can use this track map feature to put a logo in and have it animate in and out. Whatever you want really. Now to the rendering part, you can click file, export, add to render queue and it comes up with this here. Render settings, you click on here, you can change the quality. I always leave it on best and in full, so you can pretty much leave this as it is. Then for output module, in the format, there's different ways you'll need to render out your stinger. If you're using vMix, QuickTime, or PNG sequence. However, if you're using something like Blackmagic uh, and you want to render out something to do for the Blackmagic software, you will need to use a Targa sequence and it needs to be 32 bits a pixel, I am pretty sure. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. So Targa sequence for a Blackmagic software, Stinger or Wipe, and then for vMix you can do PNG or QuickTime. And with OBS you can also use QuickTime. So my go-to is QuickTime. You then make sure to select in the channels RGB plus alpha. This needs to be selected. Everything else is fine. You click OK and then you click the output and you save it wherever you want. So I'm going to save it to my desktop and I'm going to call it Stinger 1. I'm going to click save and click render. Now that it's rendered out, I'm going to open up vMix, go to my desktop and simply drag and drop the Stinger onto vMix. Now that it's here, you can click on overlay on the bottom right. You go to Stinger 1 and you select your Stinger input as Stinger1.mov. Then you'll just need to play around a little bit by pressing the Stinger 1 button and making sure that the cut is in the correct place. So I'll change my Stinger cut point to 1400 and I'll press it again. It's a bit too late, so I'm going to change it to 1200. And as you can see now, we have a perfectly made Stinger and you can pretty much do this in any way you like.